So the reading really stood out to me or spoke to me earlier, hey Charles, this evening as I was looking at what I wanted to bring as a possible topic, because we know that what happens here on Wednesdays is we simply allow what wants and needs to emerge in our conversation. I like this idea of shape-shifting that Michael talks about in his book, because what he's talking about is how we use spiritual principles, spiritual practice, to begin to shift what we have been taught reality is. And so most of us get taught, taught all sorts of things about our lack, our limitation. We get downloaded a lot of belief systems, a lot of ideas about ourselves and the world, and we end up taking those on and begin to believe that that is reality. That what we can see and what we can taste and what we can hear is the ultimate truth. And then we come into spiritual practice and we begin to look at the possibility that what we thought was real might be the illusion and this whole other invisible realm of existence actually is reality. So I've had a couple of experiences where I had an absolute experience of reality, where I got to really see very clearly that what I've been calling reality, or what I had been calling reality for all those years, and possibly lifetimes, was only an illusion created by my lens. Playing with this idea, this possibility, that this is actually a hologram. Now, people will often say, are you saying, are you meaning that literally? Like literally, this isn't even here and we're creating it through this hologram? Yeah, quite possibly. What I know for sure though, as an entry point to that conversation is, I'm making my life mean what I'm making my life mean. I'm creating my reality based on what I'm calling it. So what Michael is speaking of in this chapter is our ability to begin to shape shift our life from the inside out. When he was here last year, he was talking about being able to do that with the body temple. And one of the things we're going to be moving into, as I hard to imagine, we're almost in 2019, but we just sat with and we vision and we get quiet and we listen to what the theme for the year is wanting to be. And I got really clear in the last few weeks that what we're going to work with next year isn't so much, here's a spiritual principle we're going to explore for the month of, but here is an area of our life we're going to explore in this month and how we use spiritual practice and spiritual principle to enhance our life. So our theme for 2019 is Your Life Magnified. Now, I talked a little bit about this on Sunday for those of you who are here. In America, in the United States, we might think that magnified simply means more. Right? Just more, 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 more. Well, I mean, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just speaking about myself. I thought that's what magnifying meant. And so my question would be, look at our lives right now, and do we want more of everything? Or do we want to be very intentional about how we magnify what we want to see more of? This is a time of year when we begin part of, I think, the natural cycle of moving into this long period of darkness can be an opportunity to go within and really ask, what do I really want to create for myself now? And I'm not surprised, you know, because we've made this calendar up, and it's kind of strange anyway. Like, why January 1st? Like, why wouldn't the new year? Like, some calendars are based more on, like, the equinox and the solstice, right? Which would make more sense in the natural rhythm. So as we move into the solstice here in a couple of weeks, that's an opportunity for us to go within and to really look at what we want to create. So for example, for January, magnify, we're looking at how we magnify our intentions, how we spend time with our intentions. The reason I'm talking about this is because last year when Michael was here, he talked about how to shape shift the body temple. And he was using the example that if you have one knee that is working really well and one that appears to not be, can you hold the energy and feel the vibration of this one and then apply it to that one? And that's really what we do. We hold the vibration of that which we want to either create or that which is possible. Because when we step into reality, spiritual reality, we know it's actually infinite. The limitation is only in my mind. Think uh, going back, way back, what's the author of Jonathan Livingston Seagull? What's his name? I know you know. 
What is it? Richard Bach. Richard Bach. Argue for your limitations and surely they will be yours. Right? And so our limitations are in the mind. It's what we've been taught. And yet there's this infinite potential, this infinite possibility that exists in the realm of spirit or the quantum field that isn't about finding answers, but about living in the possibility that our mind may not even be able to understand. And I'm really aware, you know, that my job is to get up here and use words to describe that which is really indescribable. And yet I know, as I look around this room, I know we've all had that experience. Even if that experience was so far back that we remember when we were really little, when we weren't programmed yet. And I know I talk about that a lot, but it's so clear to me. I watched this beautiful video today. I love, you know, I love social media now that I've cleaned it up. Because I, about three years ago, had a moment where I recognized that algorithm and consciousness was the same thing. Because an algorithm, if you know anything about social media, is whatever you click on, they give you more of. Whatever you like, they give you more of. Whatever you dislike, because now there's the frowny face and the angry face and the sad face and the thumbs up and the pink flowers. <laughs> Whatever you click on, they give you more of. So that's consciousness. Whatever I focus on grows. Where I put my attention, life will seem to give me more of. Now, it's quite possible that we're actually working in different levels of awareness, and we can only see what we're focusing on, right? So I realized that I wasn't really particularly happy with what my algorithm was creating for me on social media, and then I realized that I was accountable. Because I was clicking on stuff I didn't want more of. I must have been. So I became really conscious, and I decided I wasn't going to unfriend anyone, but I did unfollow a whole lot of people. And I started friend requesting people that were connected with people that I love, admire, and respect, and that I had a great synergistic energy and love of. And all of a sudden, my wall changed, my newsfeed changed, everything started changing. I started getting more love, more light, more joy. And it was such a profound experience for me because I recognized that that's exactly how life is. That's not separate from life, that is life. It's just one example that shows me that I have the ability to shapeshift what we call reality. So when people, when I hear people saying how negative social media is, I don't have that experience anymore. I go onto my wall and I see that occasionally, right? Even the best of us sometimes have a little slip and go below the line and post something, you know, like there was a really amazing picture of Trump that I was like, ooh, I want to click on that one. It was so good, right? So there's that part of us, there's that part of me that that still wants to kind of be there, but there's a conscious part of me that's like, no, I know where that leads me. It's no longer about good and bad or right and wrong, it's profoundly simple. I don't want my life to feel that way. When I hold that energy and hold those beliefs, hold those ideas, I begin to shapeshift myself back into that limited, afraid self. Because it's all out there one click away. So all of that was to say, I saw this really amazing video today of this little boy. I mean, I actually, I think it was a boy because I read the comments, but his mom said, um, we need to leave now. And he was at a park and he went and hugged every person in the park. Did you see this video? It's adorable, right? Like he had to hug everyone goodbye, the people he had never met, right? And so what it strikes me and continues to strike me that when we come into the world, we come in as these open-hearted beings that just want to love. That want to love, want to be loved, want to get loved. That's why we're here, right? So the spiritual journey is a journey of remembering that. And shape-shifting is simply recognizing that we can be unconscious, and when I'm unconscious, I'm being run by the program. Nothing's wrong with that. It's just not what I want. It's just no longer what I choose to have in my life because I want, now I remember the truth of really what I want. And that's just to experience love and connection. I have a sense that's what we're all looking for. Now when I came into the world as that big, wide open spiritual being, it didn't always get received so well, and I had a lot of traumatic experiences that caused me to want to close off. 
And I thought I was protecting myself. And I was. I was also protecting myself from the fundamental thing that I was looking for, which is love and connection. So this journey, this time of the year, is an opportunity, as every time of the year is, because we can take anything that's happening and make a great story out of it. So the great story I have about right now is the opportunity as we move toward this longest night is to use that as a metaphor, not that we only have to like embrace our shadow and go into the darkness, but also that it's a time of fertilization. It's a time of going in. It's a time of looking, what are the seeds I'm planting for my life? In what way do I want to shape shift my life right now? Not at some point in the future. Right now. What do I want more of? What do I want to experience more of? What is this thing called reality anyway? And what fundamental decision can I make right in this moment to begin to shift my life into that which I've always not only desired, but I've always been? Going back to that fundamental truth. Going back to that little kid that wants to hug everyone goodbye. And hello. Right? Just being that joy. And that's why when we see people on a spiritual path, we become more childlike. Have you ever noticed how many people have met Amma here? So Amma is like this beautiful little child, right? Did you meet Amma? Is she awesome? Right, so beautiful, right? Just that experience of being in that presence. And she's like this little child up there just laughing and bubbling. And that is who we have come here to be. And each one of us has the ability to shapeshift instantly into that knowing. One breath away. What if it's not a process? What if we don't have to do anything perfectly? What if we can remember right now? So I want to close by saying, as we move into this period, we get to unconsciously create our life or consciously create our life. And we get to call this time whatever we get what to call it. I'm going to call it a time of great fertilization. And I'm going to be really conscious of what seeds I'm planting, what beliefs am I holding, but much deeper than beliefs, what vibration am I holding about my life? And that original vibration, that's that one vibration that is really the vibration of life. And when we get into that place where we get to experience that and feel that, life can't help but manifest from that place. That's just what happens, but only 100% of the time.